plus 400. I got the money now. That's what I'm Women, on the other hand, tend to have a much later age of onset, and then they tend to gamble when they're in a depressed state. And uh, part of that is to try to self-medicate themselves to get out of the depressed episode, so they use it as a way to lift their mood. What I was looking for was a way to shut out the world, and what I found was a perfect way to do that. Um, and at the same time rationalize that, hey, I'm just having fun and I can spend money and I can win money. In the beginning when I won, uh, it felt wonderful, it felt empowering, it felt like something was happening right in my life. It's this sense of elation that makes gambling so addictive at this early stage. I won a considerable amount of money. Um, early on in my gambling and, and when you're sitting there your bin would fill with coins and I'd take the coins out and put them into buckets and I'd, I'd line the buckets up along the side of the machine and you know people would go by and they'd be saying things and I wouldn't skip a beat in my gambling but I would hear the things that people were saying and I can remember a, a slot attendant coming over with a cart and taking all of those plastic cups filled with coins and putting them on this cart and bringing them and cashing them in and, and, and I got a considerable amount of money. But I went right back to the slot machine, sat back down and put all that money right back in. Laboratory experiments have revealed that winning occasionally just serves to hardwire the compulsive behavior deeper and deeper into the gambler's psyche. It is actually a more powerful stimulus than winning all the time. This is what happened to Roger after he discovered that live poker was too demanding. He found a different, more intimate version of the game, one that was to have devastating consequences. I started playing video poker just to be with my wife, to spend time with my wife. And it was fun at first, and uh, I could walk away at first. And somewhere, and I don't know when, uh, it, it just took over. It took over slowly. When I was sitting at a poker machine, I was still the best arson investigator there ever was. I was the best father there was. I was the best husband there was. When I found video poker, that was the perfect solution to all my problems. I felt like I was hypnotized. I would tell myself that I wasn't going to do this again. And I was sure that I wasn't going to do it again. And I would find myself at the casino. And I would say, I don't even know how I got here. I felt that some something else had taken over my uh, ability to to think for myself. never been easier to become a compulsive gambler in America. For Carol, it was machine gambling that offered her a seductive and intense experience. I just wanted to be somewhere where I didn't have to worry. And for me, video poker happened to do that. I think there's a there's an there's an there's an environment to video poker that can't really be created. And slot machines, anything where you can be isolated to the experience. There's such a wonderful illusion of control. And for a woman who felt her life was out of control, there was something about sitting at that machine and believing that if I win, it's because I was smart enough to make the right decision and I made that happen. But of course, if I lost, it was all about luck and, and, uh, and, and computers and random events. But there was a sense of somehow I'm trying to gain control of my life in this little isolated world that this video poker machine provides me. And I couldn't find that in any other form of gambling. I was spending more and more time. Uh, I was sneaking away. My wife started working uh, 
and during the day when she was at work I would sneak away and go to the casino by myself and in the beginning I could just stay for an hour or and later on it got to the point where I'd look at my watch oops and I would get home just before she did and whoa what'd you do all day honey oh just hanging around the apartment uh, cleaning up doing this doing that and I never let her know that I, I was out there spending extra money over time though the wins were never as often or as much as the losses and so when I would lose um, I would have to face something that was too close to the pain of living I would face reality um, Ooh, I've lost the money how am I going to pay the rent what am I going to do um, to get more money how am I going to explain to somebody that I've lost this money and then there was also the reality of the um, the guilt and the shame and the anxiety of why am I doing this? I should just stop. And so that cycle became uh, the way I lived my life. Uh, when I won, I would justify and, and feel like everything will be okay. Um, somehow, magically now, all of my problems are going, going to be solved by the fact that I'm, I'm doing great and I'm winning. And then when I would lose, um, I would have to crash down and, and face the fact that nothing is better and everything is getting worse because the means that I'm using to cope with my life is creating more problems than even I originally had when I, when I arrived here. Very shortly, and I don't know exactly when it happened, but I, I crossed that line that I call the, into irresponsible gambling, where I wasn't taking recreational or entertainment money to, for my gambling. I was using household, normal, everyday expense money. And, taking money out of a savings account and taking money cashing in CDs and and ultimately maxing out 17 credit cards because of my gambling addiction. Most gamblers don't realize they have a problem. Easy access to borrowed money just makes it even worse. 85% of compulsive gamblers reach for their credit cards to fuel their habit. Even with bankruptcy staring them in the face, a fate that 20% of compulsive gamblers have already suffered, they often fail to make the connection between their behavior and their plight. I um, moved back home because I could no longer um, make ends meet. I thought it was because I wasn't making enough money at work, um, so I took on a part-time job and still wasn't making ends meet still didn't realize that it was my gambling. I went into a very, very, what I call my dark period of my life. I went into a very severe depression. I could lose every dime I had. Maybe I lost my mortgage money. When I walked out, you never knew whether I won or lost. You could look at me and you couldn't tell because I had my head held high until I got out to the car. And when I got out to the car, took the keys out of my pocket, I probably could barely get the key in the lock because of the tears that were in my eye. I can remember one time specifically, uh, I said, I can't do this anymore. I just can't do this anymore. And I went to the drawer, I took my pistol out and I put the clip in. And I put it to my head. Do I pull the trigger or don't I? Do I pull the trigger or don't I? And then all of a sudden, I would think, you know, my mother doesn't want me to be out on the street. She doesn't want to see my wife divorce me and the kids want nothing to do with me. If I call her, I can come up with some kind of story and she'll send me money. And just like that, I will forget about killing myself. And I haven't even gotten the money. I haven't even made the phone call to get the money. But I know that it's going to come. And my head is right back at that same machine. And I'm in action. And I haven't even gotten home yet. 